We all have different experiences and perspectives in PPC, but I bet there's something that you and I will definitely agree on. We trust the ad platforms less today than we used to. Less transparency, less control, privacy regulations, data thresholds. This stuff is getting harder. Let's talk about it. This is PPC Zone, December 2024 in PPC We Trust. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales. I use the pronoun she and her. I'm a Google Ads coach, ex Googler, and the founder of Inside Google Ads. I created PPC Zone in 2022 to elevate new perspectives and insights in our industry. PPC Zone is exclusively sponsored by Optimizer, one of the leading automation PPC management suites to help you run your Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and paid social ads. Thanks to Optimizer, I can continue to bring you this live global event for free each month so we can continue to elevate new perspectives and insights in our industry. If you want to use industry-leading tools like the PPC Investigator or Campaign Automator, start your free full functionality trial at Optimizer.com. That's O-P-T-M-Y-Z-R.com. Our final speaker in the zone today is the founder of Hopskip Media, a PPC powerhouse with over 16 years of experience. This former Google Partners ambassador and rising star has spoken at top marketing conferences. In fact, I had the pleasure of hanging out with her IRL at HeroConf in San Diego recently. We're about to hear her explain how to get transparency and accountability in AI-driven PPC campaigns. Please welcome Amit Cabra. We're talking transparency and accountability in AI-driven uh, PPC campaigns. We only have seven minutes, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, so there's a lot of things that kind of keep me up at night. Um, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, really depends on how you look at it. Um, most of it is usually regarding Google Ads. Um, and lately, more specifically, it's been um, me thinking about the black box kind of nature of AI in Google Ads. Um, it's fascinating and terrifying all at the same time. Uh, Real-time decisions are being made off of complex algorithms uh, when we see a smart bidding uh, strategy adjust its bid, which is just so freaking cool and also kind of just scary at the same time. Uh, so for me, the issue comes in as an advertiser is uh, when we can't see why the decisions are being made, um, it creates this transparency gap that I feel like both affects us strategically, but also the relationship that we have with our clients. How are we supposed to explain performance changes to a client when I can't fully track um, or even explain why the machine made XYZ decision? Um, we're not trying to understand the technology at this point as it continues to develop, although, I mean, obviously we are, but we're also trying to maintain that level of trust and communication with our clients so they can continue that with their customers. So speaking of sleepless nights, I have a hunch that a lot of lawyers have a tendency to sleep a lot of, or lose a lot of sleep over um, privacy and compliance. AI relies on a vast amount of data, um, which is raising obviously data privacy and regulatory compliance concerns. Advertisers really need to navigate how to better understand what data the AI is collecting, how it's using it, and then who also has access to it at the end of it all. Um, Non-compliance to regulations like GDPR and CCPA can have some pretty severe consequences like legal action, uh, there's reputation uh, damage, um, but the most significant, or at least for me, um, is the uh, substantial fines. GDPR has gone as far as saying that they'll fine up to not up to 20 million euros and or 4% of global revenue, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, the solution I think is pretty methodical and requires just a few action steps really here. The first is mapping your data flow. So understanding exactly how data moves through your systems, understanding obviously how it's collected, processed and stored. Uh, the second is establishing clear protocols uh, around data handling and user consent. And then finally, keeping those privacy policies updated so they reflect your current practices, um, especially. So basically, I'm just saying to prioritize documentation, transparency and accountability. 
So I guess the next line of question is, well, how do we exactly do that, Amit? Um, and I'm full for full transparency. This is still something that is changing and I'm still kind of learning, but this is what I think works best currently. Um, so first is identifying, obviously, the tech stack that you've got that ha has implemented AI. Um, be thorough about it as much as you possibly can. Then what you want to do is map out exactly what data tools um, or what data these tools have access to and how they're using it. And then creating clear protocols for data handling and implement clear uh, regular compliance checks. So something that I've noticed about myself is that I kind of have um shiny object syndrome <laughs> i see something new and i desperately want to try it especially when it comes to ai um but with that being said i think there needs to be this moment of us going backwards and saying hey do we actually really need this do we really need to check this out do we need um i mean do we need it uh and i think one of the questions to really ask is uh one is to to truly understand what the implications are about using it before you jump in. Um, because really at this point, I think what it'll do is actually help us prevent issues um, versus having to deal with the aftermath. If we already understand what this tool is doing and it might not be doing exactly what um, aligns with our values or maybe it doesn't do exactly what we thought, we'll be able to mitigate any aftermath if we just kind of take care of it right away and look at that tool and look at that feature and really try to um, determine whether or not that's something that we want to use. Uh, because when a new feature comes out, everybody's really great about uh, talking about the capabilities of AI and how amazing it is. But I feel like a, a lot of people don't have um, these conversations about the limitations and the drawbacks, um, which is why I think that human oversight is still incredibly important when we're talking about using AI in our PPC strategies. So the key to making this work is building, obviously, a solid accountability framework. Um, in my experience, or what I've figured out so far, there's three key elements, even though I know I have four on my screen, but uh, two of them are technically one. Uh, so the first is reg a regular auditing process. So uh, what you want, don't want to do is very similar to what you don't want to do in Google Ads, set it and forget it. But you want to make sure that you have maybe like a quarterly or maybe semi-annual auditing process where you just go through your tools and just make sure that they're still doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're still collecting the same data. They're still using it the same way. Um, and who, asks, who has access to it has also remained the same. Uh, detailed documentation of your AI configurations and its decisions um, is also a good one. This one will help us actually maintain that communication gap that we're having with our clients and that transparency gap that we're going to have with our clients because it's making X, Y, Z decisions. So when you we notice a performance change, then going backwards and trying to figure out um, what happened is a lot harder than if we were able to identify when AI made X, Y, Z change, and then we just go backwards and look at our notes. Um, and then clear lines of responsibility. So in 2025, our plan is to um, actually assign one person AI responsibility, essentially. So they'll be the ones who are who we consult when we're talking about um, adding new features. They're the person who will be regularly auditing. They're the ones who are going to keep the clear documentation. And I think this is better in the sense that we don't have too many hands in the pot. We'll have one person who kind of already knows what's happening. And then they're at least responsible for that regular auditing and, and all that wonderful stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's basically our plan for, for 2025. Um, I don't really think it's about checking boxes. It's really kind of about creating sustainable practices that we can take that will help us protect ourselves and also our clients. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amit, for sharing your unique perspectives and insights with us in the zone. If you'd like to connect with Amit, you can find her on LinkedIn. And if you would like to apply to speak at an upcoming PPC Zone event, you can do so on our website at ppc.zone. I'm your host, Jill Saskin Gales. You can follow me on LinkedIn to stay up to date on future events. Thank you one more time to Optimizer, our exclusive sponsor, for supporting our mission to elevate new perspectives and insights in our industry. I look forward to seeing you next time in the zone.